So this video will be a little different because I need to introduce some, some context to it first. This device that we are looking at here right now is what is known as a radio sound and more specifically this is the RS41SG model manufactured by Vaisala or, or Vaisala however you want to pronounce it. They are small electronic devices, they have uh, a package of sensors inside and on the outside. These are basically connected to high altitude balloons, weather balloons. They are launched from meteorological observatories or from airports or wherever you want to measure some properties of the atmosphere such as the temperature, the humidity, the pressure or wind speed. Most importantly these are very useful for measuring wind speed and wind direction and profiling the different wind directions as it rises in the atmosphere because it has a GPS receiver inside and it's constantly transmitting its location using this antenna. So you can map its path that it took and basically use that to model, model the wind currents, the wind directions and speeds. Now many of these are launched every day. I think just here in the Czech Republic there may be like one or two launches per day from Prague plus whoever knows how many other other observatories in Europe are launching these every day and they are generally considered to be single-use devices. So when the balloon reaches the very high altitude, basically its maximum climb, climb altitude, the pressure of the atmosphere is so low that the balloon expands, it pops and this thing comes falling back down to earth. Some, sometimes they are equipped with parachutes but usually they just literally drop down all the way from the stratosphere. In most cases they don't want them back, which is how I'm able to have one over here. But these things basically literally fall out of the sky and if you find it, you can keep it. Now, some of these, they actually ha do give you a reward if you find it and return it to them so it can be reused again. But I would say that even the price of manufacturing brand new ones is quite low. And especially once we've looked at the PCB, you will see that it's not really a complicated thing. But some of sometimes they may be connected to other payload modules like at the at the back for measuring ozone composition and, and whatever. And those actually those devices are more expensive and they will actually give you a non-negligible amount of money, let's say, if you return these. Not in the case of this. Normally when you find these and there may be like websites on it where you can go to see instructions on what to do when you find them. I have read that they basically just want you to safely dispose of them so they probably expect you to take it to like an electronics disposal thing, place, whatever. But this means that you can literally just keep them. Now, I already have a few. I've only brought this one for, for this video. And the reason why you may want to keep them, well, first off, they operate at frequencies that you are not allowed to operate at, at radio frequencies that you can't use. So what you have to do if you want to use this for anything besides just having it as a as a keepsake basically, just taking out the batteries and keeping it keeping it as a trophy, let's say. If you actually want to reuse these and, and turn them on, you have to first reprogram these. It has a connector at the bottom where you can interface with the microcontroller, flash new firmware on it, and these can actually transmit on the 70 in the 70 centimeter metro radio band. So if you have the appropriate license, you can actually reuse these. They can also transmit in the ISM band for 3 megahertz. I'm not sure how, how that works. Maybe you can use it even without a license, but I do have a license, so... <laughs> what I want to talk about is the next part of the video that you are about to watch. Recently one of these has fallen within a reasonable distance, let's say, of, of where I live. I use a website called uh, Radio Sunday info and I'm not sure if that's what most people use. I think there's also Soundhub and some other some other tracking sites. APRS.fi probably would work. But these are websites that essentially plot the locations, the real-time locations of all of these that are currently in flight because they are they have networks of ground receivers that receive the UHF broadcasts from these sounds. It's APRS or radio teletype or whatever these may use and they plot them on the map. Basically I've decided to to record my my journey, let's let's say, in finding finding the fallen radio sound because I wanted to kind of show you what it looks like when you find it. I want to apologize for the audio because the at least in the first portion it was extremely windy outside 
and I had the same microphone that I'm using right now, which is a little clip mic, and the wind was just constantly hammering it. So yeah, maybe maybe turn down our volume before before we get to the to the next part. And I will get back to you at the end of this video and I will talk about what you can do with these and we will also take a look inside. We'll open this one up and take a look at the PCB and the different sensors that it has inside. Okay, we are here. We are at the place. You probably can't hear anything. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how well this footage is gonna turn out. Anyway, we are slowly making our way to the place where the radio sound should be. Now, of course, you can see there's a lot of snow. However, it's a lot less snow than there was two days ago. And it's also a lot less snow than it's gonna be within the following few days. It's been laying here probably for a week already. There's probably not going to be anything wrong with the radio sound if I find it. However, normally people just, just take them. However, on account of this being in the middle of actual nowhere, as you can see for yourself, I highly doubt that anyone has ever been here, or at least in the in the in the past week or so. Apart from animals, there's a lot of animal tracks here. Hopefully, you won't have an encounter. But I'm very close to the place where the sun should be, and I have some some very bad news. You can see there's still a lot of snow here. So what exactly it is I'm looking for besides a radio sound? Well, it's a little white box. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, look at that. Look at how much snow there is still. It's a little white box. Connects it to probably around 20, 30 meters of string and a, and a popped balloon at the end. Here you can see my own footprints from two days ago. I couldn't see the ground at all. So it's at least some improvement. Right now I'm standing directly in the place where the radio sound was predicted to have fallen. Now of course the, the ideal time to go grab a, a fallen radio sound is immediately after it, after it falls, while it's still broadcasting its own position using radio. The one I'm looking for has been dead for over a week now, so yeah, it's it's gone radio silent. What makes it easier to look for this is the very long string, the cord that, att that attaches the, the actual payload module or the actual thing to the balloon. Because this is very long. When it falls down, it can cover a very long area. And once you find any part of the string, you can basically just walk towards, it, towards its end and you will find the rest of the balloon. So the thing about the landing prediction is it's made, let's say, while the sun is still about a kilometer in the air, depending on where it is, once you lose track, once the receivers that gather the data, that receive the position of the radio sound, once they stop tracking it, once it's too low, it's no longer in line of sight, then what, what happens is a landing prediction is made based on its previous trajectory, based on the current winds, and depending on how high it was, when you lost track of it, you know, the precision of that is gonna vary quite a lot. Now, the radio sound that I'm currently looking for, lost track, or the, or the radio ground stations lost track of it while it was above that forest over there. Uh, but the prediction is that it continued flying like this and has fallen somewhere over here i don't think we're gonna be able to find anything today i'm gonna go back here once the snow has melted whenever that is <laughs> but i highly doubt that the radio sound would still be here now a few of the radio sounds that i found or maybe just one of them i'm not sure it had a parachute attached which was bright red which made it extremely easy to find however i've only seen that done with radio sounds launched from Germany, and this one is not. This one is from Prague. We found, we found a potato. That's great. That's that's great. Again, look at look at this. Behind the hill, it's like 15 centimeters of snow. It could be hidden anywhere. Look at that, for example. Right? 
It looks like a suspicious formation in the snow. This is kind of what I expected. I just woke up here, find something like this, kind of do that, and the radio sun would appear. That would be pretty cool if, if I just caught it on, on video, right? <laughs> that would be cool. But it's not because it didn't happen. Can you see anything? I'm gonna slip, slip and fall, crack my skull and die. And I won't even have the radio sound. Let's go home. Look at that. Yeah, so that was great. That was really, it was really exceptional. I hope you subscribe for more content like this. So I only have about 10 minutes of, of recording time, so we'll have to make this quick. However, now that the snow has popped off, we have a nice overview of the fields. And I, immedi I immediately notice that I don't see any balloon. Now, of course, the balloon has popped, but usually you would see it from quite, quite a large distance when you're approaching it like this. So I'm hoping it's beyond, beyond that hill over there. As I said, it's been pretty much a month since this balloon has landed here. The entire Chinese spy balloon thing happens in between. So I consider that a sign. Yeah, I just couldn't get over this. <laughs> so we're so we're back. So we're back here. It's actually nice and warm today. Which is surprising. I was a bit afraid that there's gonna be mud and and water, but it looks like yeah, it's a nice spring weather and I also wanted to come back here because I spent so much time looking for this thing under the snow. I want to see how far how far off I was or if I was walking right on top of it. Hopefully, once we get <laughs> across this hill, all of that all of those questions will be answered. But the balloon basically came from over there from like 60,000 feet or whatever, fell down and the last GPS position of it is above above this forest over here. And I already see something white on the ground, but I'm not sure if that's just trash or if it's the remains of the balloon itself. Sometimes you can find little clues around, like pieces of the balloon. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, oh. But if it's the balloon, then I don't see the radio sound, so that's not good. Yeah, that's it. There it is! <laughs> Pretty much exactly on top of the expected landing location. So here we have the balloon. Remains of the latex balloon. I'm not gonna touch it, so this is a crime scene. I can't move the evidence. So yeah, I was walking basically directly on top of it when I was here. Although I was mostly around these parts. But the last GPS position is over there. Then the stations that have been tracking it using radio have lost, lost sight of the balloon. And it has fallen over there. So here we have the latex balloon itself. A lot of the string. Oh, and it's full of spiders. That's that's that's, Im that's incredible. It's a lot of string. We can see the beautiful, the beautiful radio sound laying on the ground. <sighs> it's been weeks since the last human saw this this machine. And it's it's in written in Czech. Let's see what it says. We have found a meteorological radio sound released on the 27th of January from the Hydrometeorological Institute Observatory in Prague for the purposes of high altitude, temperature, humidity, and wind measurements. And it says it's a property of the Hydrometeorological Institute. And if I return it in three months since since its deployment, I get 200, 250 Czech crowns, which is like $10. So that's not gonna, that's not even going to cover the tickets to Prague. So <laughs> uh, I kind of want to keep it, but here we can see more information. We have a QR code. I'm not sure if I can keep this one. I, I'm pretty sure I can keep this one because the previous one did not have this sticker. And when you went to their website, it just outright said these are, these are single use devices and they don't want them back. But let's see if it still has batteries. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so the batteries are still good. I, I want to turn this off. Okay, I think it's off. Yeah, so <laughs> it still works. Uh, I believe they turn off automatically after they, after they fall, after some time. 
So, so there we go. That's the conclusion. That's the conclusion of the radio sound story. It literally took me, I can see it on the recording, six minutes and 40 seconds. So I have spent probably like two hours, but still walking around these parts, looking for it under the snow. I could have just waited a, f a few weeks and everything would have been okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna cut off the radio sound from the string. I'm gonna cut off the balloon from the string and I'm gonna because you know this is actually a really good string. I'm, I want to keep this. Look, look how much it is. Look how much of it is still here. This this really gives me this this gives me immense closure. This is like the perfect. This is the best case scenario that you can find this this device in when you are looking for it. We can just walk up, grab it, clean up the, the clean up the balloon, which is really important. Because many times I found the string, the balloon that someone left over there, but they did not. I mean, they took the radio sound, they did not clean up the balloon, so when you are doing this, just, you know, clean it up. I don't know, some animal may, may get tangled up in, in the string or whatever. I'm gonna take some pictures for Twitter, because of course I have to do that, and I'll get back to you later. Yeah, so I hope that, so I hope, hope that video was watchable. If you have skipped it, which I wouldn't blame you for, you would have noticed that this is not the radio sound that I found laying on the ground. This one has a different plastic shell, it doesn't have the sticker on it. This is one of the older ones that I found and it does appear that the newer ones that are launched today do use like polystyrene cases. In the vast majority of cases they kinda expect to not get them back because if this falls, let's say in water, in a pond and it sinks, you can't use this again. If it falls in a forest and it's, it stays hanging from a tree for a year before it falls down, Again, it's probably not going to be very, very usable, especially when it has the AA battery inside, which could leak out and damage the electronics. And at that point, you know, all these sensors, you can't really trust them to stay calibrated for for too long, which I suppose is why they, they have the three month return limit. But I have promised that we will take a look inside, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And that's also why I'm, using, why I'm using this one with the plastic shell, because it's much easier to open than the polystyrene. There's a little tab, uh, tab there, which I should be able to just pry open. There we go. And the entire thing just, just opens up like this. You can see this does have some polystyrene inside for thermal insulation. I can imagine that high, high up in the atmosphere, in the upper atmosphere, which I think technically would classify as the stratosphere at these, at these latitudes. It does get quite quite cold, and you don't want your electronics to just to just freeze. And it's probably not producing a lot of its own or own warmth from the from the small electronics inside. Uh, first thing you'll probably see is this really screwed up <laughs> connector. Uh, yeah, this was a soldering disaster. I tried connecting to this thing a few years back when I didn't have a proper soldering iron when I was trying to reprogram it. To be fair, it did work, and this one is actually reprogrammed. And but more more on more on that later. Right now, I want to take out the, the PCB, so we can sort of see what's inside. I'm gonna try to get it even closer to the camera with this microwave transformer. It's very there. We go. That's a much that's a much nicer view. Yeah, here we have some microcontroller. There are some other chips on the on the on the other side i'm gonna be honest i didn't really look much into this because well I guess I'm, I'm lazy here we have the antenna connector the two leds the button this looks like it might be an internal uhf antenna in case in case this external one doesn't work or when it's not connected here we will have also the gps antenna somewhere so this entire entire sensor strip just comes off the PCB. There we go. It has some other sensors on the top that are exposed to the to the air. So I did actually go back home just to look this up because I'm recording this in the in the garden shack. And yeah, starting with this, there is indeed a a temperature sensor over here. I'm not sure if you can even see that. It's like the tiny dark dot. That's actually a platinum temperature sensor and it's mounted on the outside very little thermal conductivity between between it and the and the rest of the radio sound 
and its tiny size means that it's not receiving much heating from the from the sunlight so it's really measuring the temperature of the of the air uh, the other component right here which i mistakenly thought maybe the gps antenna before i noticed before i noticed the one on the on the pcb this is actually a humidity sensor but it supposedly also has an internal resistor or a resistive heater which keeps it at a at a specific temperature i'm not really sure how that works they don't describe it much in the data sheet but that is for measuring the air humidity so those are the two sensors that i could find described on this on this external sensor sensor flux pcb i'm not sure what to call this and looking looking at the board itself so yeah this is the gps antenna this is a ublox gps chip Let's see if we can take a better look at that so you build a GPS chip, so that is connected to the to the PCB antenna, or rather the SMD antenna. It's not a PCB antenna. But I still was not able to identify what, what this area is with the little cutout. I looked up the model number of this chip right below it, <clears throat> and came up with a result saying that it's an analog switch, which is quite interesting. You can see that some of the traces go to the to that area on the PCB. So what I'm guessing is that this has something to do with the self-calibration of the radio sound because that's one of the features that's it's kind of pointed out a lot by the manufacturer. So this may be something like a voltage source or, or a resistor reference and it's separated from the PCB so it can be kept at a constant temperature You can see some transistors there maybe or amplifiers yeah i'm not quite sure what it could be maybe you maybe, maybe you know we probably do so let me know in the comments this is the radio chip that controls the the transmitting from the radio sound i'm not sure what this is it may be another analog switch or or some power circuitry because this does output 5 volts so there must be a a boost converter somewhere but yeah this is most likely just an inductor for the for the boost circuit because this gets 3 volts from the batteries and it's using 5 volts internally and it outputs it from the connector as well. That was used for reprogramming the radio sound, but it can also be used and its main purpose, most likely, is for connecting external sensors. So you have some UART bus connection there, you have the 5 volt output, I'm not sure if it has 3.3 volt output. It is also where you would connect your programmer and speaking of the programmer i couldn't find it i have it over here it, you can program this using this standard stealing v2 programmer and probably other ones I'm, i have no idea and in the past i have actually managed to reprogram this as i've mentioned this one is reprogrammed to transmit around four three four megahertz i believe and i have another one which was reprogrammed to transmit in uh, some other unlicensed band, I kind of forgot the frequency. But yeah, the reason I'm saying that is I was able to reprogram this a few years back. So I wanted to repeat it, right? This is the part of the video where I wanted to show you off how, how it can be done. I even made this this stupid connector, like an adapter. Let's see if the camera can focus. Because this pin header uses some, some really weird spacing. So So what I made is this adapter for it. So it can be connected to an Arduino for sending commands to the sound or to the, to the programmer using, using other cables. And it does seem to work, at least on the hardware level. The sound turns on, it's, it's reacting to being plugged into a computer. But I cannot get the SC-Link utility to connect to the radio sound. And I've tried this with three different ones and none of them work. So yeah, that's kind of where I need to leave that's where, where i need to leave this off because i'm doing the exact same thing that i, that I did a few years back with, and i and it worked with significantly worse hardware everything worked fine but now that i'm trying to replicate that it doesn't work of course and i'm gonna be honest i can't really be bothered to waste much more time with this 
if I figure it out in the future, I'm definitely going to make a video on this because it will be extremely interesting to reprogram these. Some new firmware was released, open source firmware for ham radio purposes, which I really want to try out. But yeah, as I said, maybe the maybe the programmer dies. I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with the programmer. I can't really find the cheap one currently for sale. So, so yeah, that will be a topic for a future video. This one is also getting extremely long again. I don't know what's what's wrong with me. Why all the videos become so long? <laughs> I mainly just wanted to show off the the footage of me actually finding it because it's sort of rare to find it, and it's even more rare to find it in such a good condition where it's just laying on in an open field. If you are going to use some of those websites for tracking these and you will you do decide to actually go and find one first off make sure there is not someone already planning to do that because as i said you sometimes have the chaser cars where people with sdrs go after these and find them while they're, while they are still transmitting their position on the ground you have websites like the one i mentioned where they actually people do announce when where which songs they want to take so that you won't have conflicting you know people coming there all of the ones that i have including this one were just left uncollected let's say i i always give it a few days to see if someone is coming for the radio sound if not then i can try take it i would love to try going after one that's still transmitting but i do I would have to get extraordinarily lucky to be at home while it's it's landing nearby. If you find this hanging over high voltage lines, probably leave it alone. I, I'm i sure there are safe ways to do it. As long as it's really dry outside, the string should not be conductive. But yeah, these can be... You can, you can find these pretty much anywhere. They are literally just randomly dropping out of the sky. They can be on private property, so yeah. That concludes this video. It's it's kind of a weird one. It's completely unprompted, unprepared for, and unscripted, as you as you can probably tell from the from the quality of the video, or or rather the lack thereof. In the future, we'll do a continuation once I manage to to connect to it. But for now, that's all. Thank you for watching, and yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And that's gonna be it for now.